the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Praise God. This is Pastor Bill Emmons, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. And uh, we're coming to you live from, uh, well, the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. We're just actually across the uh, county line here into um, the next county. And we're in Broken Arrow, which is not a county, it's a city, but uh, we're, uh, we're in the area. <laughs> so praise God. Let me close down a couple of things here. Praise God. And Pastor Mary. Praise God. Anyway, good to have you with us. And uh, I declare this is the day the Lord hath made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. And that's what you need to be doing every day. Amen. Uh, today we had the last of our snow or sleep, whatever you want to call it. It's snow that's as hard as a rock. <laughs> and, it's, and if you step on it, it's like stepping onto an ice skating rink. And if you got any hills, like we got a driveway that slants downhill, <clears throat> you can ice skate, well, shoe skate all the way to the street. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it was nice having all that white out there, even though we knew it wasn't actually snow. It looked like snow. It was white. And <clears throat> because it was frozen sleet, uh, it stayed around and didn't just disappear overnight. But today it's been raining all day. And uh, all that beautiful white covering of everything has been uh, basically melted off by the rain. And so now we wait for the next uh, snowstorm. And uh, we've taken authority over the weather that we don't have any extreme weather. And, um, you know, nothing is damaging or life-threatening or property destroying. And uh, so a snowstorm that, you know, leaves six inches, even 10 inches or so of snow uh, is nice. The only thing that we have to then pray over is people's driving. <laughs> so praise God. Anyway, uh, we're enjoying winter. Uh, we're, we're from Southern California, as most of you who know us know. I grew up there, been there all my life up until July 2021 a year and a half ago, basically. And uh, this is the first time I've ever lived anywhere outside of Southern California. And it's been a uh, learning experience and uh, people drive a little bit slower back here. And, uh, but one of the neat things is you go into a store and people greet you and ask you how you're doing. They, they, uh, when you leave, they say, God bless you or bless you. And uh, it's, it's just like, whoa, where am I? <laughs> you know, but, um, we're not used to that. Anyway, uh, Pastor Mary says, oh, this ain't nothing. She says, I grew up in snow that was up over your head. You had to walk above the cars on the sidewalks because the snow was so deep to get to school, you know? And, uh, well, I'm glad I didn't have to go up in that either. So I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way that it did. Anyway, praise God. Uh, got a couple things I want to uh, announce to you or ask you about. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, we're, we're just about at 16,000 views so far this week. Our goal is 25,000. We had a drop off right after the new year for some reason. I, I don't quite understand that. Maybe people just kind of shut down after the holidays and now they're just starting to get back uh, in, uh, in the groove again. Uh, but, uh, we've, we dropped down to about 9,000 views. Uh, we were right at uh, 21, 22,000. I think the last number we had before the end of the year was 22,500 uh, or something like that. It was, it was getting really up there close to 25,000. So we should be get back at that level and beyond, hopefully shortly. That's our goal, 25,000 right now. And then we'll jump it up to 50,000. But uh, the more people we can reach, the more people that can hear the good news, the gospel, and be set free. So I want to ask you to, to um, help us out by going over to my YouTube channel, which uh, is under Pastor William Emmons, and you should see my face. Otherwise, it's not me. There, there's another Pastor William Emmons on the East Coast, uh, but that he's not me and I'm not him. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, go over to our YouTube channel. 
help us out by uh, finding our channel and then subscribing and liking and sharing. Those are the most important things. Subscribing because that ups our subscriber numbers and we need to reach a particular level so that we can uh, live stream directly onto YouTube where we archive most of our uh, services, but we have to uh, copy and paste to get them there and be nice just to be able to uh, live stream directly to them. Uh, but we need 29 people uh, to go over there, find our page. Uh, like I said, subscribe, like, and share. Always share because that's reaching out to more people. Amen. Uh, so that's important to us. We need 29 more people. So help us out there. Uh, also, I'd, I'd like to find out how many locals are, are following our program, uh, our ministry. Uh, locals meaning uh, Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Jinx, uh, what, what's the other ones, Bixby, uh, anything, any of the communities around Tulsa. Because what I'd like to do at some point, when we have enough uh, followers here in the, in the local area, is to maybe have a once a month meeting or something, uh, you know, a healing meeting or where we get together, have some great worship, bring in some worshipers, uh, worship teams from maybe other ministries, and then just have a time of uh, ministry and, and uh, you know, let the healing anointing flow. And uh, we, that's how we start out in the ministry. We start out going to local churches, um, unannounced, uninvited, <laughs> And for the first year, I preached um, in the entire year, every Sunday in a different Assembly of God church because we were in the assemblies at the time. And uh, <clears throat> it was amazing how God would work it out. But the pastor didn't know me. I didn't know them. And uh, before the day was over, I'd be preaching that night without ever asking or telling the pastor that God sent me. Uh, God just worked it out, had the pastor communicate with me and ask me, a particular question, which was usually, are you in the ministry? You know, did God send you? Then I could respond. And uh, so that was our on-the-job training. Then the next year, the Lord spoke to us to uh, start holding seminars. And we rented um, the Holiday Inn out in Van Nuys, California. And we rented the uh, one of the um, auditoriums out on the campus of the University of Redlands. And we held once a month meetings uh, at those two locations for the next year. And in, in the process of that time, uh, we had met Ed Dufresne and uh, he had a church he, be, he was beginning up in uh, the Palos Verdes Peninsula in California. And uh, Dennis Burke came and told us about it and recommended we go visit. And so we went up there one Sunday morning and uh, we we're sitting there before the service, uh, kind of toward the back, and Ed Dufresne came out of the office and uh, walked right toward me and greeted me and and because uh, we had met at a full gospel businessman's advance where I first met uh, Kenneth Copeland and Ed uh, Ed um, Dick Mills and Jim Spillman, uh, they were the speakers, and that transformed my life. But uh, anyway, Ed Dufresne came up to me and, and uh, welcomed me, and, and uh, then he walked off. He got about five steps away and turned around and came back. He said, the Lord just spoke to me and told me you're supposed to preach here tonight. And that began a two-year relationship where uh, many of the times he was out of town, I was one of the men he would call upon to uh, conduct the Sunday morning uh, and or Sunday evening service. He had two or three of us there that were all called into ministry and just getting started. And uh, so that was our second year of on-the-job training. But um, we've, we've kind of gotten back to our roots. We're starting out here in the Tulsa area with uh, no, uh, no physical congregation, no building, uh, and just listen to the Lord as far as when and what to do. So we'd like to minister to the local people around here. So if any of you that are watching or listening uh, would uh, send us an email at wemmons one at gmail.com and say, I live in 
Tulsa, I live in Bixby, I live in the Jinx or Owasso or uh, yeah, Broken Arrow, whatever. Uh, we'd like to, once we start getting a few people together, uh, they would like to meet with us once a month, do some teaching, uh, be praying for the sick, and watch God do mighty things. Uh, we, we really want to uh, do that as soon as we can start seeing some um, people showing interest uh, that live in the area. So pray for us on that. That's our next faith project. I haven't even told my wife about that. So she's, she's probably sitting there thinking, what? <laughs> but um, I'm not trying to start another church. I'm just trying to listen to the Lord and be obedient to do what he calls me to do. And uh, ministry is, is what he's called me to do. And the people is who he's called me to minister to. And so that's, that's uh, the direction we're going to head at this point. So let us know if you're in the area. We'd love to hear from you. Love to meet you and when we have start having our meetings, get a chance to meet some of you folks. All right, if you're out of the area, if you don't live in the, this Tulsa area, but you come through, uh, you know, sometime it might be nice to meet some of you that uh, are following our ministry or partners with us particularly. Uh, we really want to hear from our partners. So let us know if you're coming our way. All right, um, I think that's it for announcements. So let's get into part two uh your perception of reality question mark in other words what is your perception of reality and what forms your perception of reality see some people think this natural world is reality this is a shadow uh the spirit realm is reality uh, we are spirit beings given a earthly or human body made from the earth and uh, in order for us to live uh, in this planet and be part of this environment. But we're spirit beings made in the image of God who is a spirit being. And uh, as you know, there are a number of different types of spirit beings that exist. And of course, the Father, Jesus, who came down and became a man, stripped himself of deity, according to Philippians chapter 2, he was... Uh, died on the cross to pay for our sins, to redeem us back to the Father, to give us fellowship with God. That's called right standing or righteousness, right standing with God. And that's why we can come boldly before the throne of grace in prayer and obtain help and mercy in time of need. But then Jesus was raised from the dead and he was caught up into heaven. Uh, his earthly body, they see his spirit, man never died. It was his earthly body that was raised up. The spirit came back into him and God raised him up. And then he went up into heaven as a, and I, if I say this term, you'll understand it better. He was the first born again man because he came and was born as a man, lived as a man, died as a man to take our place, to pay the price for us. So the first born again man to ever go to heaven was Jesus. And then he was seated at the right hand of the father. So, we have a human representative. And now don't, don't get on, you know, oh, he's blaspheming, he's taken away from Jesus. No, I'm not. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, he stripped himself of deity and humbled himself to be born a human being. All right, that's, you can't get much clearer than that. So uh, we have a human, a man representing us in heaven at the right hand of the Father, the the most powerful place anybody can be seated is, is at the right hand of the ruling majesty. That's Almighty God. But uh, the Father is a spirit being. G uh, Jesus was before he stripped himself and became a man. And uh, the Holy Spirit's a spirit being. Then you got angels. And of course, there's demons, which are fallen angels. And the devil himself, which was a cherub, the, the uh, most high cherub, cherubim. Uh, and then there's other beings in heaven we do not know hardly anything about. Some of them we don't know any. We've never even heard of them, but there's a few we've heard of, but don't know what they are. Uh, then we've got cherubim and seraphim and there's some kind of thing that's called a beast. We, we don't know exactly what that is, but we don't need to know. When we get there, we'll find out. Praise God. What I'm getting at is God didn't, didn't come down and become a man when he created us mankind. So if when it says he created us in his image, one translation tells us that the, the correct translation would be more like this. 
an exact duplicate in kind. Well, if God is a spirit, and the Bible says he is, then we are spirit beings. He breathed his life, his nature, his spirit into that body of flesh called Adam, and it became a living soul. It wasn't living at all until God breathed his life into it. And so that made us partakers before the fall of the nature of God, the life of God, uh, the able to communicate with God, to operate on God's level. And then man, Adam lost it. And then, of course, Jesus took it all back and gave it back to the church. So hallelujah. Now you got a short version of the whole gospel story. Anyway, so here's how a lot of people, even Christians, uh, determine their perception of reality. I'm just double checking to make sure I got all my microphones on. Uh, there's a microphone and e microphone in each camera. There's three cameras running. And then I, there's a microphone on my um, tablet that uh, is used for editing and it's on. <clears throat> so we're well covered with microphones. <laughs> um, anyway, so what forms the average person's perception of reality? Well, their senses, the five physical senses, what they see, what they hear, what they feel, they smell, they taste, you know, they touch and so forth. If that's all you can live by, then you're what the Bible calls a fleshly uh, human being living by the flesh, by the senses. And uh, the Bible says if we walk by the spirit, we won't be, we won't yield to the pressures, the temptations of the flesh. And that's where the devil tries to get us in our flesh, tries to get us to do something that is uh, contrary to righteousness, which would be sin. And that we've got to take control of the fleshly part of us. We do that with the word of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, meditating the word, speaking the word over our lives, meditating the Bible, reading and studying the Bible. These are all things that will renew our mind and build faith in our hearts and tune us in to the voice of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, and get us tuned in to spiritual things. All right. <clears throat> if we can learn to live by the leading of the Spirit, then we have victory over the temptations of the flesh. But a lot of Christians have not done that. And a lot, of course, people are not born again. They live strictly by the flesh. Now, let's take that to another level. Uh, in the natural realm, what do we allow to form our perception of reality? Well, the biggest things are what we see, what we experience, what we hear, and what people say. And we listen a lot to what people say. We've, in the last two and a half years, well, almost three years now, uh, since the COVID, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say too much about that, but since the COVID stuff started uh, in what, 2020, I guess it was March. I think we had the shutdown in California in March of 2020. And um, so we're, we're right at what, three years now? Um, that uh, got a lot of people listening to other people who were supposed to be experts. What we have now discovered is many of them were not experts. Many of them were people who knew the truth behind what's going on and um, were purposely not telling us some of the truth. And I'll, again, I won't get into any more of that, but we've had a, a, a experiment for three years and the world, the globalists uh, have tried their best to get us to change the way we think, to change our, our perception of reality based upon what they were telling us. And that's the devil's been doing that since the beginning. They tried to change Adam and Eve's, the devil tried to change Adam and Eve's perception of reality and, of reality, and actually did succeed. That's when they fell. And they got Adam uh, and Eve to begin to think that maybe some of the things God said were not true. Oh, surely you will not, sh you will not surely die if you eat of the fruit. See, reality is what God says. Bottom line, 
period. What God says is reality. This God is a spirit. The spirit realm is reality. When we lay down this body in, in what we call death, you will step over into the spirit realm and you will step into the real, um, I'm not even sure how to say it. Uh, you will step into the real life uh, because we're all going to live forever. Now, if you're, if you're not born again, you will live with your Lord, the devil. And unfortunately, God prepared a place for the devil and his angels because of the great rebellion in heaven. And uh, it's called hell and eventually the lake of fire. And hell will be cast in to the lake of fire with its inhabitants. And that's why it's so important to me and to uh, preachers all around the world that we get the gospel, the good news out, that there's a way to escape that. It's by making Jesus Lord of our lives uh, and receive redemption or salvation, get born again, and uh, be, become a new spiritual being in this fleshly body. So the devil will use people. The devil will use experience. You've heard it said Experience is the best teacher, but that's a lie. That's deception. It's meant to get you to believe that statement so that you believe that only this natural realm is real and only what's happening in this natural realm uh, is what we can have when God tells us exactly the opposite of that. So people will form our perception of reality. Uh, circumstances can form your perception of reality. You say, well, you know, I, I have a, uh, an aunt, an uncle, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, whatever it may be, that uh, loved God, born again, testified in church every Sunday. You know what I'm talking about if you grew up in church. And uh, yet died of cancer. And they prayed for healing. Mm -hmm. And they, they perceived that as reality, that God doesn't always answer prayer, that God doesn't always heal. But the Bible says something opposite to that. But we have to receive by faith. The force of faith operating in our lives is what gives us the physical access into the realm of the spiritual promises of God. And when you grow up in a house that uh, gives you excuses for not getting healed, not getting prayers answered, and so forth, uh, that forms your perception of reality regarding prayer, regarding healing, uh, regarding, uh, you know, God's provision and so forth. All right, so circumstances. The devil really wants to have us uh, live by circumstances. You know, well, I experienced this, or my mom or my dad experienced. Well, that doesn't make that real. That makes it, that a natural thing. What was going on in the spirit realm? That's, what we, that's the real realm, and that's what we need to find out. Uh, so circumstances, experience, and of course, the five physical senses are all part of that. That's how we have experience. That's how we have uh, understand how circumstances uh, affect our lives. <clears throat> all right. So last week we talked about 10 guys who led millions, literally millions of people uh, in history. We have a record of it uh, into deception by getting them to believe or perceive something contrary to what God said as reality. Now you say, oh, you're talking about Hitler? You know, you talk about Mussolini, uh, Emperor, uh, uh, I apologize, um, Hirohito, I think that was his name, uh, Japan, or before that, you got Caesar, the, the, more than one Caesar. Uh, you have uh, uh, the... Um, Oh, uh, try to think of the Mongol that ruled so much of the world during his time. Um, anyway, you probably all know who I'm talking about. Uh, but there's been uh, people since, uh, you know, Adam and Eve fell. Uh, Cain killed Abel. Uh, you know, I mean, there's always been somebody that wanted to destroy other people for one purpose or another. And with Cain, it was jealousy more than anything else. Awkward silence while I drink my tea. And like I said, you can go through history. Uh, and time and time again, every generation, there's somebody in the world that wants to take over the world. We've got people right now 
They want to take over and control the world to their perception of reality. They're, they got a rude awakening coming because when they die, a lot of these guys are getting pretty old. When they die, they're going to have a real uh, change of perception because they're going to meet the devil face to face and they're going to be going uh, into hell and be in eternal punishment. You say, oh, Pastor, now you're getting real negative here. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And uh, we've had enough people that have died and come back that have given us the testimony. They went down to hell first and they went up to heaven. They got to see uh, both areas and they testified and told us what they saw, what they heard. Uh, so we've got a lot of people that have uh, verified that in their testimony. <clears throat> All right. So 10 guys called, they were called spies. They were 10 men. Actually, they were 12 picked out of the 12 tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And they were leaders of the tribes. And uh, they were uh, given the job of going into the promised land. They're standing at the border of the promised land. And uh, Moses gives these 10 guys uh, directions to go check out the land, uh, see what you can see, and come back and report. But God had said, I have given you the land. That, that, see, God's perception of reality is whatever he says, because that is reality. So he made a, a statement. He said, I have given you the land. As far as God is concerned, it's now theirs. Well, Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Caleb were the only four people who took that at face value. And, and later on, we'll see that both Joshua and Caleb exhorted the people and said, we can take it. God has given it to us. But there were 10 spies. See, the two were outnumbered. Uh, even if you include Aaron and, and Moses, the four of them were outnumbered by the 10. And the 10 managed to tell such a dreadful sight of things they saw uh, in the promised land. Giants and the land swallowing people up and the Hittites and, and you know, all the different ites that were mentioned. Um, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing they portrayed when they came back created a different perception of reality. The reality was, and Joshua and Caleb told the people later, uh, we can take the land as God gave it to us. And that they had God's perception of reality. Part of the problem we have today is the reason why we're not getting results, we don't have God's perception of reality. We don't take God at his word that because that's reality. We don't uh, understand that the spirit realm is where we get our power from by faith, and that, that that is the force that drives our spirit being, our, our human being that, that dwells inside our bodies here, that even though we're living in this flesh, that we are spirit beings. So we have a different perception of reality. It is contradictory to the word of God. And that's what they were facing. So the, the spies, 10 of them came back. They gave what the Bible calls an evil report. They said, we saw giants in the land. The, the sons of Anak uh, descended from the giants, or the Nephilim actually is mentioned. And uh, those are the giants historically. And they're the offspring of the fallen angels taking women and bearing children. Uh, and those children, most of them turned out to be giant uh, human be or not human, they were, they were a hybrid. It's exactly what the the evil planners of this world today are trying to do. They're trying to create a hybrid race that they have the ability to control, that they can control our thoughts. They can control our, our uh, movements. Uh, we have no free will and we become slaves to the masters. And this time it's not Hitler with the Aryan race. It's people that think because they have a lot of money, a lot of power that they know more about what uh, should be done in this earth. But God created this earth and he has a plan. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the 10 spies, the scouts came back, brought an evil report <clears throat> and it caused the people to break down and begin to cry. And it says they cried all night long. Now all this can be found in Numbers chapter 13. And uh, it tells us they cried in chapter 14, they cried all night long. And um, 
in uh, verses 1 through 4, and all the congregation uh, cried out with a loud voice, and they wept all that night. All the Israelites grumbled and deplored their situation, accusing Moses and Aaron, to whom the whole congregation said, Would that we had died in Egypt, or that we had died in the wilderness. Why does the Lord bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Well, God didn't bring them to that land, the promised land, to fall by the sword. He promised them, get this, he promised them, you will live in homes you didn't build. You will drink from wells you didn't dig. You will eat from vineyards you didn't plant. I have given you the land and I will go before you. Well, if God goes before us, that means any enemies that would be there would be swept out of the way. Well, they messed that up, and the ten spies are the ones that really fouled it up, and they came back and talked about all these other negative things. Then Joshua and Caleb get up, and and uh, <clears throat> it goes on. Joshua and Caleb said to the Israelites, The land through which we passed is an exceedingly good land. Do not rebel against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. He said, we're going to eat them up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them, but the Lord is with us. Fear them not. And then it goes on down in chapter four, verse or 14, verse 10. But all the congregation said to stone Joshua and Caleb with stones. Why? Because they believed God's report. They spoke what God said. Their perception of reality is what God had declared. We got a lot of people today who would like to stone Christians. And in some countries that's going on. Because our perception of reality is a spiritual viewpoint, a spiritual perception that has uh, the ability to change the natural world we live in. But the people that are not born again don't understand spiritual things. Paul said in, in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 2 and then chapter 14. He talked about that and he said they can't understand spiritual things because they're spiritually dead. When you're not born again, you are spiritually dead. You have death working in you. The law of the spirit of death is work at work in you. When you're born again, that what goes to work in us is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus or through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, they wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb for just tell, saying what God said. But the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting before all the Israelites. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people provoke, spurn, and despise me? How long will it be before they believe me, trusting in and relying on and clinging to me for all the signs which I have performed among them? Well, that goes back to their time. Uh, from the time they left Egypt to the time that they walked into the promised land, finally, 40 more years later, that God did mighty miracles for them. He, he uh, had bread, uh, we'll call it manna, uh, bread, manna to eat, quail to eat, uh, water flowed out of rocks for them. Uh, the enemies, uh, the enemy army, which at that time was the greatest army in the world, um, was the Egyptian army uh, set out, the Pharaoh just set, set out to not only capture and bring back the Jews, but kill as many as they could in the process. And uh, God drowned them in, in the Red Sea. <laughs> I mean, here Israel walks across on dry ground. The Bible says the wall, water, walls of water congealed. That means they became solid. And, and it says they walked across on dry ground. They weren't walking in mud or deep sand or anything. They walked across on dry ground. But once the last person got up on the other side of the embankment, uh, <laughs> Moses turned around and, and waved his rod. And boy, that wall, those two walls of water just came crashing down and drowned uh, Pharaoh's whole army. To, and they have found, now they have found down in the Red Sea at that point where the crossing was, they have found the ruins, the uh, chariot wheels and the, the metal parts that are still there. And uh, I guess they brought some of them up to kind of put them back together and show. But the, the proof is there that it happened. Somebody said one time, well, don't you know that uh, 
at that time of the year, the level uh, of the um, uh, water is really low. Uh, and you could walk across that in six inches of water. Well, that's even a bigger miracle. God drowned the whole Egyptian army in six inches of water. <laughs> See, you can't get around this. It is what it is. That's reality because God did it. All right. All right. So, so we get down to verse 26 in chapter 14. Uh, what did Israel allow to form their perspective of, of reality? Uh, in verse 26, the Lord said, what you have said in my hearing, I, I will do, or remember we talked about this last week, the um, causative permissive verb is used here, which means I will have to allow to be done to you. Okay. What did they say? They said it would have been better to die in Egypt. It would have been better to die uh, out there in the desert coming across to the promised land rather than try and go in the land than be eaten by these giants and swallowed up by the land. Well, the, <laughs> there's, there's a false perception of reality. <clears throat> God did all these miracles for them, and yet they forgot them all and didn't trust God. All right. Uh, even those men who brought the evil report of the land died by a plague before the Lord. But Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, uh, who were among the men who went to search the land, lived still. Amen. Now, uh, I said last week, and I don't have the notes in front of me, but I said last week that uh, I wasn't sure at the moment um, why uh, um, Moses and Aaron didn't go into the promised land. And uh, I, I have those notes here. Of course, you know, when you're preaching, you're going one direction and sometimes stopping to go to a different direction is hard to do. <laughs> and uh, so when I said that, I wasn't thinking about you know, the, the scriptures and what it said about them. Uh, so I'm going to, maybe next week I can read these to you uh, so that you'll know exactly why uh, uh, Moses and Aaron did not go into the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb did, along with all the, uh, what were at the time originally, the, the children, 19 years old and down, uh, were the ones that were promised by God to go into the promised land. And from 20 years old and up, they, they had to die off uh, before they could go into the promised land because of their rebellion and sin and unbelief. And uh, so uh, when that finally happened, the last of that 20-year-old that generation, when they all died, now 40, 45 years later, Pastor Mary said that she um, said it was 45 years. Is that right? Is that what she said? When took the mountain, it was 40, he was 85. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, in that time frame, all those generations died off and all the people that were 19 years old are now in their 40s, <laughs> you know. And then, of course, the children that were younger than that aren't quite that old. But uh, now it's time to take the promised land. But um, so Joshua and Caleb led uh, the, the children of Israel that were now the adults, and, and their offspring, because a lot of them got married and had children, led them into the promised land. And that's where this story was taking place just prior to that event happening. Israel had focused at that, at that place of the, when the evil reports were given, Israel focused on the, the stories that I believe were exaggerated uh, by the 10 spies that gave a negative or evil report. I don't believe the land swallowed up the people. There were giants. We know that historically they were there. They mentioned the sons of Anak. They mentioned the Nephilim specifically. And so we know they existed. We know they were there. They existed from before the flood of Noah. And uh, that's another whole study. <laughs> All right. So our job today, using that as a warning to us is to not allow our perception of reality to be the result of focusing on the circumstances, focusing on what the world is doing, focusing on uh, the evil things that have been going on in the world. Uh, we, it's too easy to get focused on all this evil stuff 
and and get in fear and oh my god what are you gonna what, what's gonna happen and this and that and, and somebody wrote you know that chinese balloon that went over the country a few days ago somebody said well don't you know that was right at the exact height they would need to explode an atomic bomb that would um, send an impulse uh, that would wipe out all of our electrical uh, grid all over, all across the country, and then they can just march in and take over. Well, I got news for China. That would never happen. That, uh, in, that electrical or uh, impulse, EMP uh, pulse that would come from that explosion does not kill guns. <laughs> and <laughs> this is one country, man, we got guns. And I know the liberals are trying to get rid of them, Ain't going to happen. Uh, this is one of our founding fathers' adamant uh, things was that we were, we were to be able to defend ourselves against an uh, ungodly, evil, uh, dictatorial government. Our own, not just somebody else's government, our own government. And they set that up as part of our Bill of Rights and part of our Constitution rights. And uh, so, they, I mean, there's some people that they got uh, guns, uh, I, I wouldn't even, you know, guess a number. Um, but here in Tulsa, I see people walking around with guns and a holster on their hips. Uh, I see people, once in a while you see when somebody bends over something, you can see the outline of a, um, a gun that's uh, in a belt uh, behind their back where their shirt's covering it or something. And, and nobody is concerned about it, you know. Uh, if some guy tries to hold up uh, something around here with a gun, he's probably going to have 20 or 30 people pull out a gun, you know, and put a stop to it. And uh, so I'm not worried about the Chinese invading this country, to be honest with you, or the Russians or anybody else for that matter. Why? My perception of reality comes from heaven. It comes from God. It comes out of the spiritual realm. And it's based on the promises of God. Amen. All right, so what, what do we have to do? We have to get our focus on, like Joshua and Caleb did, our focus has to be on what God says, what God has said and what he is saying, because that is reality. God doesn't speak any empty words. He doesn't say something and then later on say, oh, I was just kidding, I didn't mean that. No, God means what he says and says what he means. And if God says it, you can bank on that, amen. So our focus has to be on the word of God rather than on our circumstances or our experiences or what people are saying or what symptoms may say. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 <clears throat> from the King James translation, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So there you go. There's, there's one of the basic premises of, of how we can walk in the victory that God has provided for us and be led uh, by the Spirit or into spiritual things, is we walk by faith. Faith in what? Faith in what God has declared. Faith in His Word. Faith in Jesus' words. All right, Jesus with a little apostrophe after. That's, that's plural, or not plural, but it, it's, it's possessive, right? You all, you all know that English stuff. <laughs> all right, so... Let God's word, so here's the basic instruction. Let God's word form your perception of everything you face. That you start, you come down with symptoms of something. Don't let the symptom or what the doctor says form your perception of reality because all the doctor can do is tell you what he sees. But there's a power bigger than what the doctor can do and after all, doctors can't heal. All doctors do is deal with the symptoms. They try and make it better or they cut things out to get rid of it. Dr. Jesus, man, he's the healer. And uh, I know firsthand, uh, a few nights ago, I, was, I had about three or four nights in a row where my heart was just acting weird and I was, I was having trouble sleeping at night. I'd get up and go in the living room and, and I knew the devil was trying to get me to get into fear and, and to give up. He tried to kill me already on August 8th of 2021 when my heart stopped. But Pastor Mary and, and my son, John, that they would not give up on me. And they got the family going and all my family was praying for me. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, our family is a powerful family of faith. 
because they've all been raised up in faith. And they got their faith going and God raised me up. And eight days later, I walked out of the hospital. But when I started having these symptoms, a few, you know, a week or so ago, <clears throat> excuse me, the devil was trying to tell me, all right, this is it. I couldn't get you before. I'm going to get you now. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, give you a heart attack. You're going to, you're, you're not going to wake up in the morning. Your wife's going to wake up and find you laying there dead as a doornail and stiff as a board and, you know, all that nonsense he tries to put in your mind. So I could feel my heart doing weird things. I didn't know exactly what it was. I'm not a doctor, but uh, we have the word going, our healing scriptures going all night long. And I've, I, I had to let, when that started, I put, turned the volume up so I actually could hear it while I'm laying there in bed. I'd lay there in bed and I'd pray in the spirit and I'd bind up and I'd lose because the Bible says what you bind is bound, what you lose is loose. And finally, I reached a point, I had had enough of this nonsense. I said, heart, be still, be at peace, rest. Now, I didn't, mean, I didn't say for it to stop. I told it, calm down. And, and you know, I'm going to tell you, like that, all that stuff stopped. And here it's been, I don't know the exact number, five days, six days away from there, and it's still at peace. It's pumping away, doing its job, because God gave me a new heart. Well, I can, I can try, I, 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 trying to formulate some thoughts here. You can live by circumstances and you'll never have victory. You can live by what it feels like and you'll never get healed. You can live by what the doctors say and you're going to be on medication the rest of your life. You can live by what the news says and be afraid if you had um, and I'm just going to say this, if, um, if you got the jab, you all know what I'm talking about. And then you've heard about all these athletes that are, have, you know, you can find them online. I mean, it, there's plenty of vi videos out there about all the athletes that have been in the middle of some sporting event and just fall over, have a heart attack and their heart stops and they die. Uh, you can get fearful over that stuff. You don't have to get fearful. God has the ability to remove whatever is in your blood that's detrimental to your body. God has the ability to heal you of COVID. God has the ability to heal you of cancer. If he, if he can deal with cancer, he can sure deal with COVID. <clears throat> if he can deal with cancer, he can deal with your blood and purify your blood for you. So you don't have to be afraid of the stories you hear. And, uh, and I'm not... I'm not trying to link that to anybody or anything. I'm just telling you, you know, what you all know and hear between the news and things that are online. Uh, you don't have to be afraid of it. Talk, you know, like I said, talking about, you know, the, the Chinese trying to invade, you know, thinking about they might want to send one of those bombs and the impulse and so forth. You don't have to be afraid about it. Now, they talked last few weeks, they've talked about this comet that comes around once every 58,000 years. Well, in the natural, you're not going to live long enough to see it the next time it comes around. <laughs> but you're not, you, if you're born again, your eternity is not in the natural. Your eternity is in the spiritual. And if you learn to live by the spirit today, you step over into the power of the spirit. All right. So, but they're talking about, you know, next time it could some come close to the earth. It could maybe hit the earth. Well, 58,000 years from now, not concerned about it. <laughs> you know, there's going to be a new heaven and new earth before then. All right. But there's all kinds of things. The earthquake, that, that earthquake. Here we are in, in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, and the seismographs here in Tulsa picked up the shock waves of the earthquake over in, uh, what is it, Turkey, that uh, has now, as of today, over four, they're talking more like 6,000 people. They have verified over 4,000. They're talking over 6,000 people that were killed by that earthquake from Turkey into northern Syria. And, um, you know, that people are scared. Well, well, you know, what if this? And what if that? And what if, you know, well, we don't have to wonder what if. The Bible says what you bind is bound, what you loose is loose. That's a spiritual weapon. That's not a natural weapon. There's nothing you can do in the natural to stop an earthquake. But when you have the word of God, your perception of reality can become, I have dominion and authority over that land. 
And I do not allow a major earthquake to come and destroy people's lives and homes and, and uh, jobs and so forth. <clears throat> California, I, I was taking authority over the land every night because of all the, I grew up out there, so I experienced a number of good-sized earthquakes. And uh, <clears throat> we began to learn the principles of binding and loosing. So I began to come against it, and I said, you know, land, I take dominion and authority over you. And there's something called the slow slip, where the pressure on the plate lines or the fault lines has to be released. And that's when it releases, it snaps, and that's where the earthquakes happen. But um, there's a slow slip. And while we're out there, we began to hear about this, that there was a lot of pressure building up on the San Andreas fault line, and that uh, it could snap at any minute. But what's happening is that there's a slow slip going on, and it's so uh, subtle that you don't. nobody ever feels the ground move. They don't know what's going on, but the pressure is getting relieved. So, I mean, there, you know, once you learn your authority, you can do things like this. You don't have to lay down and say, oh, my God, you know, we're, we're going to have, and we're going to get hit with an earthquake. We're going to get hit with this. We're going to get hit with that. No, you don't have to. See, perception of reality can be changed by the things you focus on. I focus on the Word of God. So my perception of reality is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing's impossible to me because I'm a believer. Uh, no weapon formed against me, and I'd include my family and our partners. I say no weapon formed against me, my family, or our partners will prosper. No evil shall be us. No plague shall come near our dwelling. No earthquake shall come near us. No destructive storm will come near us. You see how you begin to, your perception of reality, your reality is the spiritual power of faith in what God has declared. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let God's word form your perception of reality. Uh, I'll, I'll just introduce this for next week. The New Testament example, uh, when the priests and the Sadducees and the captain of the temple had uh, arrested the apostles for preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus, they, uh, <laughs> the, the disciples had to have the right perception of reality. The natural reality is they were told if you preach and teach in the name of Jesus, you're going to be thrown in prison. And yet their response was totally opposite to that because their perception of reality is it's better. Peter stands up and he says, should we obey man or should we obey God? Well, I'm with Peter. We're going to obey God. Man says, you can't preach. You can't teach. They said in California, you can't have church services. I had to obey God and we had, our doors were open during the COVID shutdown in California. And we had some people that were brave enough that trusted God to come to church, not be afraid of getting COVID and nobody did. <clears throat> you have to change your perception of reality. If you're walking in fear, if you're walking in defeat, if you're walking in poverty, lack and want, sickness and disease, pain and yeah, it goes on, the, the curse. My perception of reality is Jesus Christ redeemed me from the curse. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set me free from the law of sin and death. So those things have no power over me unless I give it power. The symptom tries to come and I said, no, I reject that. I resist the devil and he flees. I resist his nature, which is the curse. And every act of his nature that tries to come against me I resist and it flees. It cannot stay in the name of Jesus. All right, so if you want to pre-study for next week, uh, pre-study Acts chapter 4, and uh, we will get into that next week and look at <clears throat> what the disciples had to deal with, and we'll be able to see what their perception of reality was. It's, it's not our the, the natural mind, the natural man's perception. It was a perception based upon what God said. Amen. Well, I trust you got something out of this. I know there was a long introduction and testimony, um, but I believe that was God. You know, I, I prepare my message with, and I got my notes for what God has put in my heart to minister on. But I always ask the Holy Spirit to take charge and speak through my lips and bring forth what God is saying for the, for the moment. And uh, so I believe that what I shared with you was important and some of you will 
obviously be tremendously blessed. Some of you are going to have to study it out. So do it. Study it out. Um, but I, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, I'd like to hear, you know, your testimony. Or if you got something out of it, send me an email and say, Pastor, I listened to your service Tuesday night and uh, I got this. I got that. Whatever it may be. Oh, praise God. Sister Bibler. Hallelujah. Good to have you with us. Sam Andrews, pastor all the way over in India. Good to have you with us tonight. And Morgan, good to have you with us. And I know there's others. We've been, like I said, we've been running, uh, you know, right now as of this, for this week, we're up over uh, 15,000, going on 16,000 views this week. Uh, our our next step, and I believe in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get up to 25,000. And then we're going to go beyond that and hit 50. Keep on going. We are called to reach the world. And right now, this is our avenue. Online ministry is our avenue until God opens up the door for me to go somewhere and, and minister somewhere. This is the way we're doing it. And we're going to keep on doing it until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. All right. We love you guys. I'm going to put a screen up over my picture here for the last couple of minutes as I talk here to, through the end. And this screen is simply to give you information. If you are blessed by this ministry and you, we, you, we have no organization supporting us, so it's our partners and our friends who are willing to give by the leading of the Spirit and support this ministry that allow us to do what we do. That's why we have the equipment and we're able to do the things we're able to do online here. So you can give by mail uh, if you're going to send checks or money orders. Make them out to CFC, Post Office Box 141074, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74014. If you have PayPal, have a PayPal account, use our email address. That's the third line on the screen there. And by the way, send me your emails. Use that email right there. That's my email. You send me your emails, your testimonies, your prayer requests, and we'll, Pastor Mary and I will pray, and we'll get an agreement with you. But if you're going to give by PayPal, use that, and then... On the, when you get to PayPal, you go to the next page, I believe it is, and they'll ask you about friends and family option. Make sure you click that. Otherwise, they'll take out fees. Uh, if you have a Venmo account, you can give through Venmo by typing in, just as you see it on the screen, the at symbol, william emmons 10 capitalize the first letter of both names. If you want to give by debit card or credit card, you can email the card information using our email address there, or you can text the card information to 818-679-7067. We'll run the card. As soon as it clears, we then delete all that information so nobody can get their hands on it. We've been receiving tithes and offerings for 10 years this way, and we've never had a problem. So we're very diligent about protecting your information. We don't give out your information. We don't sell it to make money for our ministry. Uh, would protect you. We love you guys. I'm going to take that off the screen now. You can go back and look at it later. Have a blessed week. I know this coming Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. I don't know if uh, your favorite team is playing or not, but I'm sure it's going to be an exciting game. And a lot of you, this is another kind of holiday for a lot of people. They get family and friends together and barbecue and things like that. So enjoy yourselves. And uh, I may preach Sunday morning with my team, uh, jersey on <laughs> just to be in the the Super Bowl uh, thing there, uh, spirit, I guess. But uh, it's going to be a, an exciting game, I'm sure. Uh, well worth watching if you like football. If you don't like football, watch the car races or the golf game or, you know, uh, just watch preaching all day long. You can go back and watch my preaching as long as you want. <laughs> Amen. All right. With that, we love you. We'll see you uh, Sunday at our regular time. Whatever time that is for you, you know it. And uh, with that, good night.